when I first played the Sega Master System, I was really impressed with its graphics. They were so colorful and many of its games looked so much better than the NES software I had been used to. When I played the 3D and Light Phaser games, again I was blown away. I mean, this was the 1980s and this stuff looked and played like nothing I had ever seen. But things just kept getting cooler with the Master System. On top of the colorful games, the super cool 3D glasses, and the Ace Gun Library, it also had games on freaking credit cards. Or at least what I thought looked like credit cards. I hadn't really noticed at the time, but there was actually a little slot on the front of the system for them. And man, I thought this was so cool. I later learned that these little guys actually started back on the SG-1000, and was Sega's way of offering up a game lineup on a budget. These cards weren't just tiny in physical size, but also in the storage on them. That allowed Sega to offer them up cheaper than full-size cartridges. In some regions, they were half the price of regular games. There weren't very many of them made for the Master System, but a few of them were actually decent games. In this episode, we are going to go over the 15 titles released in the Sega MyCard line for the Master System, and see which ones are worth playing. Bank Panic was originally a 1984 arcade game by Sanritsu and Sega. The 1987 Master System port is based directly on that, and it comes off quite well. The goal here is to shoot down bad guys as the bank customers make their deposits. Once every door sees a deposit, you move on to the next stage. Despite how this looks, it's not a light phaser title, nor did it use a light gun in the arcade. Instead, you have three doors on screen at any given time with down shooting the left door and the two face buttons on the controller taking care of the other two doors. The setup is super simple and you are playing just for score. I applaud this for designing a shooting experience around the controller, but it would have been a huge positive if it still supported the light phaser as well. But as far as the arcade experience, this nailed it. It's colorful, fun, and very easy to play. If you're the type that doesn't care about score, it does get fairly repetitive, and it's only one player, but outside of that, this is not bad at all. This was not released for the North American Master System, and it has a cartridge variant in most regions. In 1986, Sega released Comical Machine Gun Joe, a Japanese MyCard exclusive for the Mark III. This was a shooter that puts you in mind of games like Nam 1975 on the Neo Geo. You move right and left as enemies attack from various places around the screen. You have the ability to jump to avoid bullets and shoot enemies on higher ground. Eventually, a much more powerful enemy appears to end the stage. Of course, I didn't play this until much later, and it's quite difficult. Hell, I'm not even sure I'm playing it right, because death seems to come out of nowhere sometimes, even though nothing hits me. It's also begging for two-player co-op, but only supports one. It does have decent visuals and can be fun in short bursts, but this one didn't hold my attention for very long. Being stuck on a single plane in a shooter can be infuriating, especially when your jump has such an incredible lag to it thanks to the animation. This one is just as likely to punish you as entertain you. F-16 Fighting Falcon is a game I despise. The visuals, the gameplay, you name it, and it's about as off-putting as a game can get. I've tried, I really have, to enjoy this and I just can't. The choppy gameplay is just not fun, and I've had about all I can take of this for this capture. Sorry guys, this is just one of those games I can't play. Of note, this did appear on cartridge in a few regions outside of Japan and North America. 
1982, Sega released Monster Bash in the arcade, a single-screen action title that had you hunting down Dracula, Frankenstein, and Chameleon Man. Sega revamped this idea in 1986 for the Master System and called it Ghost House. Here you were trying to collect the jewels hidden inside Dracula's castle. Avoid the enemies, find the key, score the jewels, and get out. It sounds easy, but this one can be tough. There's all kinds of stuff here to stop you. Knives, mummies, bats, death, and of course Dracula himself. But even that can be deceiving as not every Dracula is the real thing. This is actually not a bad game at all and can be quite compelling with two players. The multiplayer is not at the same time, but it still provides some fun. To be honest, this is quite a bit better than the arcade game that inspired it and definitely is worth a look if you collect or play Master System games. Like almost all these Sega card titles, it's easy to understand and can be enjoyed in short bursts at a time. This is another one that was available on cartridge outside of North America and Japan. In 1985, Sega brought great baseball to Sega cards in Japan. This is not the same game that appeared in the West, and it's quite a bit weaker. I wouldn't call it awful, but I'd much rather play the Western release. There are so many better baseball options on the Master System. And speaking of sports games that aren't the same, there's the 1985 release, Great Soccer. This one was released in a few Asian and European regions, and even saw a Megatech arcade release in the UK. The Great Soccer in the United States is actually based on another game called World Soccer. I actually don't mind this version even though it's definitely an acquired taste. It moves in little spurts instead of a constant flow, so I'm positive many of you will absolutely hate this. It does have a nice cadence to it once you get used to it though, and the lower difficulty allows a novice like me to actually have a chance against the CPU. A few places around the globe got it on cartridge, but the Sega card version tends to be extremely cheap. I won't blow smoke up your bum though, it's not going to be for all of you, but I found it far from terrible. Hang Hangon needs no introduction. Based on the arcade smash hit, the Master System Edition was a solid port that looked and sounded as good as you could have hoped for for the time. This originally was released on card in Japan, but was available on cartridge as well in other parts of the world. Curiously enough, this never received a standalone release in the United States, a surprise considering its quality. It was available later as a combo cart with Astro Warrior, and a few models of the hardware had it built in. This is still well worth a look today, and one of the better racing games for the platform. My Hero originally showed up in the arcade in 1985, and man did I hate it. It played similar to Kung Fu Master, but this dumbass is a hero in name only. It takes next to nothing for this worthless guy to be taken down, and when it came home to Sega Card in 1986, absolutely nothing had changed. Well, except you only get the arcade's first level. Good god I can't stand this. The music, your fighting style, the insta-deaths whenever anything touches you, it's all a journey of pure pain and suffering. For what it's worth, the presentation is rather faithful to the arcade, so if you enjoyed it there, you should get along quite well with it here. Not me though, I find this about as off-putting as a game can get. Pit Pot is a weirdly named 1985 release that has you rescuing a princess from an evil witch. You'll need to find a few items as you explore the single screen stages to save your beloved, and should you fail, it's game over. This reminds me of Zelda in a number of ways. 
Instead of wielding a sword, you have a hammer, and you'll need to smash the respawning enemies to have any hope of survival. The stages are made up of tiles that can be smashed away, so be careful because break too many and you'll lose entire sections to the pit below. You'll also need to deal with puzzles and time limits, pretty much making multiple play sessions a must to see any kind of success. This one only got a standalone release in Japan, and is one of the better Sega car titles you'll find. Released in 1985, Satellite 7 puts you in mind of a few Namco shooters from around the same time. I mean right down to the enemy patterns that put you in mind of stuff like Galaga and Xevious. Like those titles, the aim is simple. Survive the onslaught of enemies with your pea shooter and bombs. Visually, there is nothing special here and the repetition is fairly off-putting. But it's not a bad playing game at all. Simplicity is this game's greatest issue, but some of you still may appreciate the challenge. Japan was the only region to see a standalone card release. Spy vs. Spy first showed up on Sega Card in 1986 for the Japanese Mark III. This game is quite good and even features two-player head-to-head action, which is where the real fun is. Gameplay is actually quite deep, with each spy capable of setting traps and hand-to-hand -hand combat. I really enjoyed this game and have found it a blast to play with friends and family members. You can really have some great matches once you learn the ins and outs of how everything works. It's a port of the original that showed up on Atari and Commodore computers in 1984. While this was only on Sega Card in Japan and North America, other regions saw a cartridge release as well. This is Super Tennis. I hate Super Tennis. It was known as Great Tennis in Japan, but this turd is neither great or super. Some regions saw it on cartridge, but I feel bad for anyone that spent money on any version of this travesty. You have about a 50-50 shot at hitting the ball no matter how you approach it, leading to some frustrating misses that should have been easy returns. Nothing positive to say about this, avoid it at all cost. 1985's Teddy Boy is based on an arcade title of the same name. It's a run and gun where you must traverse stages that wrap around the screen, shooting down enemies and collecting their shrunken bodies. Presentation wise, it's pretty close to the arcade and gameplay wise, it's pretty much a carbon copy. I won't lie, I found this extremely repetitive for a long time, but recent play sessions has seen me enjoy it quite a bit more. It's grown on me to the point I've actually started playing the arcade original every so often. A number of regions got it on cartridge if you'd rather have it there. It was also remade for the Mega Drive in 1991. Originally dropped in 1985, Transbot was the very first Sega card I ever saw and played. This is loosely based on the arcade game Transformer, which was presented in a similar graphics and gameplay style. I was so excited because I was a huge Transformers fan, so the concept of a shooter in that vein was quite appealing. It plays much like a standard horizontal shoot-'em-up where power-ups appear as A through G options. Some of these power-ups will transform your ship into a robot giving you access to increased firepower. It's a simple game, but I enjoyed it all the same. It really only needed a two-player co-op mode, but you can play it taking turns. Like many of these Sega card releases, outside of Japan and North America got cartridge versions as well. 
This one gets a bad rap sometimes, but for a budget release, it's easy to recommend. The very last Sega card released for the Mark III was 1987's Woody Pop. This Japanese exclusive was a Break the Blocks puzzle title similar to Arkanoid. It used the paddle control exclusively and will not work with a standard Mark III pad. You know how these games work. Keep the ball in the play area as it breaks blocks and hits various other things. Woody Pop has a few power-ups you can employ like fireballs and hammers but it's really about breaking blocks, so if you enjoy that sort of thing, this should be right up your alley. If it looks familiar, that's probably because you played it on the Sega Game Gear, where it was released in pretty much every major region. The Master System Sega card line didn't have a ton of titles, but there are some very much worth playing. As you have probably guessed, I wouldn't play most of these until well after the fact, thanks to many of them not being released in North America. That probably means that some of you played these as kids and have a higher opinion of them than I do. There's also some of you in Brazil that got these games and one of the many compilations Tectoy included with their hardware reissues. No matter how you played them, I think you'll agree the old Master System had a number of worthwhile releases here. If you haven't played these but enjoy a good throwback experience, I do recommend you take a look at them. As most of you know, NEC and Hudson would also use a similar design for their Hue cards on the PC Engine. But it was here that I saw the technology first, and it always stuck with me on how ahead of its time the Master System was in many respects. Not only was the thing capable of some pretty impressive visuals, but the bells and whistles you could add to the hardware always made things interesting. And if there's one thing I can definitely say about being a Sega fan, it was certainly interesting. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.